Hello everyone and welcome back to Keeping Up With Ken. My name is McKenna and I am an incoming freshman at Stanford University majoring in computer science. Today I am going to do something super exciting for my new series Ace the App. In this video I'm going to guide you step by step how to answer all of the specific Harvard questions on the application. I'm going to go through how I answer those questions and more specifically and more importantly how you can answer those questions for yourself specifically. So to get started, first of all, if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I make videos like this all the time and I'll be making more in the upcoming months. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna see more of this type of video, be sure to like this video specifically. So thank you all again for watching and let's get right into it. Throughout this video, I'll be using this paper as a guide to remind me of the different questions that I wanna answer for you guys, as well as present you with some basic stats about myself if you haven't watched my other videos already. So to start off, of course, my name is McKenna. I am from Colorado and I got, these are my high school stats. I got a 34 on the ACT. I had a perfect 4.0 unweighted GPA and an almost perfect weighted GPA as well. The only non-honors classes I took, I was required to take for graduation. I had four different club leadership positions, two presidencies and two just leading the club. I was a part of over eight clubs in high school. I spent my junior year working on research at the University of Colorado where I ended up getting my name on a published paper and I have multiple national awards ranging from computer science to just pure academics. So to start off, Harvard will be test optional this year, but I would like to caution everybody and be wary of this that if you have taken standardized tests such as the ACT or the SAT that you should still submit those tests even if you don't think it's the best score, even if it's not perfect you should still submit them and here's why i think test optional is great if there is a reason why you haven't been able to take those tests there have been a lot of cancellations this past year there's many reasons why people may not have been able to study for them and if that is true make sure that you note that in the additional information section however if you have taken the test before, it is only to your benefit to submit it. It won't go against your application if you don't, but it will go positively towards your application if you do. And so that is my first note of all of the different questions that they ask you. If you're submitting test scores, answer yes if you've taken them and answer no if you have not. Don't feel pressured to take them or get them in if you haven't already, but be sure to submit them if you have especially this year, there's gonna be a lot of test optional people and you wanna have that extra addition to stand out. So the next thing it asks you on the application is to choose an academic program. This means uh, your undergraduate major. So choose one that you truly believe you would like to go into. Don't think that choosing a social science or psychology will help you get in over computer science, right? It doesn't matter, you are not bound to the major that you choose and thus you should actually truly answer with the major that you intend on having. I put down computer science, that is a competitive major at a lot of schools. I put that down for every single school I applied to. So it's not to your deficit to put down the actual major you intend on going into. Then it asks you to choose three areas of study that you'd be interested in. This means stuff that you might want to minor in or have a concentration in. For me, I chose stuff like economics. Um, you choose three of these. They're, again, they're non-binding, so choose ones that you'd actually be interested in doing. The next thing their application asks you to do is rank from one being unlikely to five being most likely how your academic and extracurricular pursuits are to change. So how likely and unlikely they are to change over your years in college. For me, I think I ranked most as a four or five, but it's not to anybody's benefit or deficit. Again, rank honestly. So you should answer honestly. If you think you might change from being a computer science major to being a philosophy major, that is totally fine to be honest there. They're just wondering about you. They're trying to learn about you. And this is not a hard hitting question. These aren't hard hitters answer them very honestly. The next thing you have is the option to apply to the Berklee College of Music or the New England Conservatory. So if you are somebody who's submitting an arts portfolio, which you have the option of doing, this is highly encouraged if you still want to pursue music in college. These are great dual degree options. It says specifically not to choose both of them, so only choose the one that you want most. But if you are looking to pursue music, again, choose one of these and submit an arts portfolio along with it. That will be to your benefit. 
The next section of the application is about activities. It's not about your activities specifically, but it's asking you about the activities at Harvard that you'd be interested in doing. So what you're going to want to do is go to the Harvard website and find the club listings. They are hidden. I know they are hidden because I struggle to find them, but go and look for those activities, those club student organizations that you think you might want to get engaged with on their university. This will also help you later when you're answering more in-depth questions about the things that you truly like about Harvard. And if you know about the organizations that you can join and you know about the different clubs, then you'll be well informed on the different stuff that you actually truly like about Harvard beyond just the name Harvard, right? Choose up to five activities. I selected five activities. I think I had track and field as one of them, robotics as one of them, general computer science clubs, stuff like that. So answer them. Again, you are not bound to whatever you choose, but be honest in your pursuits. And then finally, the last of the short answer questions, there are two 150 word prompts. I'm about to read them. First one is, your intellectual life may extend beyond the academic requirements of your particular school. Please use the space below to list additional intellectual activities that you have not mentioned or detailed elsewhere in your application. So for this question, I detailed about stuff that I did not write about in my common app. That was my research, that was my hobbies like beekeeping, that was things that I did as an aside, my love for poetry, how I like to write it. So intellectual pursuits that are outside of the things that you're already elaborating on. And keep this in mind because you have a long answer question later that if you are specifying something in here, you don't want to also mention it in the long answer question. So save your favorite activity, the biggest thing that you have not yet mentioned on this application for that long answer question. You can answer this question either using bullet points or you can formulate it into more of a paragraph. I formulated mine into more of a paragraph, meaning that I said, these are all the things that I haven't mentioned yet in my application that I truly love to do outside of school. I'm a part of advisory boards. I like to go volunteer at the homeless shelter. And so giving yourself that space, that 150 words to elaborate even further on the stuff you might have even mentioned in your activity section, but you only got a couple characters to talk about, elaborate on those things here. The next question says, please briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. So the difference between this question and the prior question is that this one can be stuff that's less academic in a sense. So in the prior question, you could talk about things that you do outside of school that are involved in computer science or whatever your potential major is, whether that's writing, something that is notably academic or intellectual. But this next question, you could elaborate about a sport that you really like. I talked about my experience in track and field, how much that meant to me, my ongoing and continued participation across a lot of different sports and how that built my character. And so you can use this section to elaborate on something that really helped you build yourself as a person or you think that is a staple to who you are. Especially if you've had to work throughout high school, it's super important to use the section to talk about your work experience and how you were able to lead through that experience. It doesn't have to be a definite leadership position, but you should definitely talk about the different areas of your work that you participate in and what it means to you. Now for the long answer question. So unlike a lot of other schools, Harvard only has one long answer question. However, there are a wide variety of prompts to choose from and there is no exact word limit. You should make your essay between 400 and 650 words. Don't make it any longer than the Common App essay, but also use the space that you're provided to talk about something meaningful. So here are the different prompts and here is how you can answer those one specifically. The first one is unusual circumstances in your life. If you want to talk about your home life, this is your space to do it. If you want to talk about coronavirus, I know there's a separate section where you can talk about that, but if you want to talk about maybe a project that you did working on it, here is the space you can talk about a project. If you have any circumstances that you feel like you need to elaborate on, do use this section to do so. A lot of kids are very afraid to elaborate on their individual circumstance. Do not be afraid to do that. It will only be to your benefit. The second prompt is a letter to your future college roommate. 
Stanford also has a very similar prompt. This one can be a lot of fun. It's not actually going to be sent to anybody, but you can talk about the things that you enjoy talking to other people about. You could say, I want to teach you about this one passion of mine. I want to learn about this passion of yours, right? Have a conversation. This is your area to really even have a conversation with the admissions officer and allow them to see the type of person that you are. The third prompt is travel, living, and work experiences. Again, this is like the work experience question before but you have even more space to talk about it so if you want to go in detail here about your work don't go in detail about your work in the other question leave that one to some other activity the fourth prompt is an intellectual experience that has meant the most to you so I use this prompt I talked all about my love for computer science how I got into computer science starting all the way back in eighth grade my first introduction to stem all the way to senior year and how I really integrated stem into my everyday life from my at home activities to the ones that I did in school to the ones that I did outside of school and so you really want to go in depth on whatever that intellectual experience is go from the beginning how you got started out why that was meaningful travel all the way through to what you're doing now and then the most important piece that kids always forget is to extend upon that portion extend upon it as in what you want to do in the future if you don't talk about what you tend to do in the future it's harder for the admissions people to see you at their school and what you'd contribute to the student body so in every single prompt that you answer you want to make sure that you're actually talking about the future and what you want to do in the future at their school so use this question to talk about an intellectual thing that you enjoy now and how you hope to extend it into college, into Harvard. The fifth question ties in perfectly to what I just said. It is how you hope to use your college education. This talks about the well beyond future. However, you're gonna wanna start in the now, move and transition into college, what you plan on doing in college. Then finally, transition into your life and career goals. That question is a super important one. If you are going into something like pre-med or pre-law, this question might be very important for you and you might wanna choose this prompt because it can allow you to elaborate on exactly why you're majoring and what you wanna major in, your pursuits beyond undergraduate and why you wanna make that pursuit and continue on into your life's work and why you specifically want to work in law or you want to work in medicine. This is your time to elaborate on why you've chosen this path for yourself and what you hope to do with it in the future. This one is a little bit strange. It's a list of books you have read during the past 12 months. So given that this has been a long quarantine, we've been in quarantine for like five or six months at this point, even longer as time goes on, this might be a great prompt for you if you've spent your quarantine learning about new things. If you've read a lot of books that are teaching yourself about different subjects, then this is your time to elaborate not only on those books and which ones you've read, but why you read them and what you learned from them. So if in this list, it's not really just a list, you know? Anytime a college tells you to list something, it's never truly just a list. You should talk about why you like to do those things, why you chose to read those books, and what you got out of them. Especially, you know, which one was your favorite book, too. You can have a side comment in your essays. I have done side comments in a lot of my prompts. The next question is reflections on a time when you or someone else had to act with integrity and honesty. So if there is a life lesson that you learned in high school that you have yet to resent, either in your Common App essay or in the other short answers, this is your time to talk about that. This is a character question. They wanna see who you are as a person. So be sure to answer this one with the utmost honesty. You don't wanna make yourself seem like a savior or anything, but you wanna answer with the difficulties that you went through, how you solved your problems, the people that you met along the way, the lessons that you learned, and in the end, how that shaped you as a person. And then again, most importantly, how that lesson will continue on in your college journey. This next one is super straightforward. It's what you would do to contribute to the lives of your classmates to advance the mission of Harvard College. So I think the most important thing of all about this question is really pinpointing what the mission of Harvard College is. And so I would recommend going and looking on their website. There's not just one mission, let me just tell you that. There's not one mission to Harvard, but if you can pinpoint a place or a goal that Harvard has had in educating students, the fact that it's liberal arts in a lot of ways, you should go and talk about what your individual skills and your individual passions 
can add to the student body at Harvard and also elaborate how they've already added to the student body at your school now. This next one I think is specifically for people who are pursuing a gap year or who might pursue a gap year. It is about taking time off before or during college, your takes on that, why you might want to do it, what you'd be doing during your time. If you are taking a gap year, talk about what you'd wish to pursue during your gap year. Even if you don't have a definite plan, this is your area to elaborate on that. And if you specified earlier on your application that you would like to take a gap year, this is a very important prompt to answer. If you think you might take a leave of absence during college or you want to pursue something during college, like a study abroad program, you could even turn this prompt into an answer about study abroad and experiencing different places around the world. This next prompt is distinctive aspects of your background, personal development, or intellectual interests. That is a very, very broad prompt. You can use that to talk about anything about yourself, but again, it's most important to fit the structure of how you started, what you do, what you're doing now, why you're passionate about it, what you hope to do in the future. And the very last one is a prompt of your choice. You can answer this however you would like to answer it. If you would want to talk about a single activity in a way that the other prompts don't necessarily cover, then go ahead and do that with this one. However, it doesn't matter what prompt you choose. Just make sure that in that prompt, you are extending their knowledge of you. Don't reiterate or re-elaborate on something that you've already talked about in detail on. You want to make this a new piece of yourself that they're able to discover. And so use those words wisely. Don't over elaborate and definitely don't under elaborate on something. If you want to talk about multiple activities at once and how they integrated into who you are and formed you as a person during your high school years, then talk about it here. Go ahead, go for it. But make sure that you talk about why those passions are very important to you, what they will lead to in college, and the story and background about why you originally pursued them. Here are some final highlighted tips that I have for you guys. First one, know your intellectual pursuits outside of the classroom. This is one of the most important things to Harvard. Of course, you can get A's and honors in AP classes, but you want to talk about not only what you do within those classes and how those shaped you, but how you further pursued your interests outside of them. That is the most important piece of any application, is your further pursuits and extracurricular work. This could be research or independent study. Quarantine has been a great time for students to study things or find new intellectual interests, so be sure to talk about them. Harvard gives you a lot of different places on their application to talk about those different intellectual interests and how you've evolved to learn about them or engage with them. Also elaborate deeply on your leadership. So you want to talk about these positions that you've taken, even if it's not a formal position, as I said before, how you've shown leadership in the individual things that you do. To colleges like Harvard, what really matters most is how much you love what you're doing and that you'll actually continue to pursue things that you enjoy to a high level in their college. When you are formulating your answers to these questions, take your time to write them. Make sure that you are telling them about everything you want to in your application. For me, I made a list of the different activities that I wanted to make sure that I noted in detail in each application. There were certain ones that I didn't mind if I just wrote a single sentence about, but there were other ones to me that were so important and integral to who I am that I made sure that I left a prompt, a full prompt, open to just talking about that one activity. And so for you, I think it's super important that you identify the most important things that you did in high school. It doesn't necessarily have to be huge, but it should be something that was meaningful and formative for you. Then you should look at the prompts and find which ones best fit each prompt. If you have a certain activity that you only did for a year but it was super integral, use one of the shorter length prompts to talk about it. If you had something that you did for four years that was incredibly important to your high school career, talk about that in the long answer prompt. Give yourself that space to elaborate. And most importantly, answer with complete honesty and be true to who you are. Don't try to be quirky or do something strange with the prompts because you think it will make you stand out. What will make you stand out is the actual true passion you have for what you do and how you're able to elaborate on it and talk about it in your essays. If you truly love what you're doing and you love what you're talking about, it's much, much easier to go into that vast detail that they want in those questions. And that is my last tip for all of you guys. Again, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I'll be making more of these videos and give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was helpful in any type of way. I really hope it was. I spent a lot of time answering these questions myself and so I I really hope this gives you a great guide on exactly how to answer those questions for Harvard in the most effective way possible for you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.